Hi, I'm Milio Diambo Mabona, Member of Parliament Suba North and Minority Chief Whip. Um, recently um, wrote a book, Rig or Be Rigged with a question mark. And I'll be launching the book on the 1st of October 2024. And the book is about lessons that I've learned in politics. And it's primarily uh, for women seeking to join politics even though the lessons are also useful for the men, but it is primarily targeting the women who are interested in politics. I also want to say that because the book has very many highs and very many lows, uh, if you find that it looks like it's pretty hard, do not be discouraged because my experience is not necessarily your experience. One of the things that I've um, looked at is how can we join politics? So I've looked at different approaches and I'd want to look at one of the approaches because it's one of the ones that is very misused um, or in terms of uh, you know, the way people perceive women in politics, which is called the bottom-up uh, approach. And uh, what I say is there was for a long time an unwritten rule that most women getting into politics had to use a bottom-up approach. This was not, and it's not necessarily true. Though some women think it is easier to use this approach, first on party owners and at times on financiers, since elective politics is expensive. I remember there was a time a super rich male colleague tried to hit on me by telling me that I needed to have a social political financier in order to survive in politics. Dumbfounded, I shared this with one of the women politicians and her response was even more flabbergasted. She said, your vagina is not a product that you buy wholesale and retail, so don't be mean with it. It is free, it can be used, and it will remain as is, where it is. You need money for campaigns, give him. In any case, exchange is a fair game. This is where I would go <laughs> in my mother tongue or ish ish in my father tongue. Interestingly, these same sentiments were shared by a woman in my constituency who used different words to explain why some men were attacking me at some point. In her view, all I needed was to give him or them what he or they wanted since my vagina would remain exactly where it has been through the years. I know some people might be a bit shocked when I say this, but unless we call things by their names, women will continue to be misused. We are an amalgam of people in politics with the different ideologies, standards, ages, and backgrounds. For many people, especially the younger generation, sex is no big deal. You can have it anywhere, anytime, with anyone. You can have it with your head hanging down a tree, under a chair, on the phone, under water, or under a viaduct. You can have it for a second, one hour, 20 minutes, or a whole night. For this generation, what matters is self-gratification. It therefore becomes difficult to infuse morality into a political class. How you engage in politics is therefore totally up to you. However, it is a fallacy that you must be immoral to remain in politics. It is also a fallacy that women in politics must compromise their values. It is a fallacy that you, move, you must use a bottoms up approach in politics to survive. And I want to clarify that this is not the better approach of the KK. This is a different bottoms up. This is a bottom up, this is a bottoms up. The truth is for some people, the bottoms up approach appears to work. I don't know how proud they are with it since I've never been in that situation, but I suspect I would not be proud of myself if the only way I got to the top was questionable. As a professional and as a leader, I believe you can make it and come to leadership on your own terms without feeling you are someone when you actually don't. Ultimately, of course, the choice is yours. There's a male politician who is notorious for bad table manners. He apparently can easily influence the issuance of certificates in his party for women candidates 
under one condition, that he finishes with you on his office table. One woman MP told me that she had vitalized in a party and was not successful even after clearing. She was told to see him and he would help. She told me, Millie, if lying on that table would earn me a certificate, why not? I did, and I got my certificate, and she was elected. In other jurisdictions, it would cost him his political career. In Kenya, we just classify him sexually lethal and move on. Another issue you need to learn is that the public and even uh, most male colleagues believe that all women in, in the public life are also publicly available. You will be assigned many boyfriends. I was assigned many. When I got nominated, most people did not understand how. So they had to, there had to be a male angle to it. I was originally assigned to Honorable William Ruto. I was offended when I heard it. Then a senior woman colleague told me to use it as leverage. He was in the Pentagon. He was seen as powerful. I thereafter got cheekily quiet. I let people believe it. It opened doors. Indeed, one time when the house was full because there was an issue of national importance to discuss, I went and sat next to Honorable Ruto deliberately and engaged him on and off in a lovey-dovey manner to watch the reaction of my other colleagues. Since I was supposed to be his girlfriend, most members were caught off guard and wondered how brazen I was sitting next to him and chatting with him during live media coverage. Later, I was assigned to Honorable Raila, though it fizzled out fast. I think the framers must have seen how stupid it sounded, even as propaganda. Then I was assigned to Honorable Uru Kenyatta because I led a group of nominated MPs to him when he was finance minister, and he assigned 120 million shillings to us in the budget for our activities. Some members could not understand how he could easily agree to give us that money. The interesting bit, though, is that we were with the chairman of our caucus, Honorable Musikari Kombo, but he became conveniently invincible. The money reached the Parliamentary Service Commission budget, but of course never reached us. I am also told I am a girlfriend to my nephew, Brian, and to few other public figures, both young and old. I am yet to know who my current boyfriend is, though. I cheerfully welcome these many boyfriends assigned to me, depending on what value they add to me politically. As a woman, do not be overly troubled when you are assigned boyfriends, real or imaginary. This is because you have not come up with a new invention. All of us exist because two people engaged in sex. It is up to you to choose your standards, be they liberal, or conservative because ultimately you are the one who knows who you are answerable, answerable to, God, yourself, your family, or the public. You also need a healthy personal ego that does not need affirmation or assuaging from elsewhere. Take time and build a solid self-concept. Love yourself, respect yourself, that way you will be able to weather the storm of innuendos, propaganda, and lies, often of a sexual nature, against you. Why? With a positive self-concept and esteem, you do not need to look behind you for approval, as a primary opinion that counts is yours. I believe I am the best, and I will not allow any amount of sex shaming to define me. It is only when you reach that level that you will be able to poke fun at yourself, accept the idiotic propaganda for what they are, idiotic, and set your lifelong standards that matter to you and live by them. Uh, for those who may be interested in getting the book, um, you will find information about where to get it below. Thank you.